Fasting has been done for hundreds, if not thousands of years by people for religious reasons. In recent years, fasting has become a popular activity among health-conscious people who do it to try to improve their physical health. But to fast is to go without food, to go hungry, or to starve oneself. We've all seen pictures of starving children who are nothing but skin and bones. If starving oneself is healthy, then those children must be the pinnacle of health, right? According to Wikipedia, starvation is the most extreme form of malnutrition. In humans, prolonged starvation can cause permanent organ damage and eventually death. You're about to learn the detrimental physiological effects of fasting on human health. The goal is to give you an evidence-based perspective on how the body works and what happens when it is deprived of food. I hope you learned something valuable and in some way it helps you improve your health and life. Welcome to the End All Disease Podcast. Here's Mark. This presentation I call The Dangers of Fasting, aka Starvation. Table of contents, we're going to go over the physiology of fasting slash starvation, since the two are really the same thing. Mainstream perspective of fasting. So we're going to go over what the mainstream has to say about fasting, whether it's good for you or it's not. Most times the mainstream isn't right. Fasting inhibits thyroid hormone. This is one of the detrimental effects. Fasting increases toxins in the body. Fasting inhibits detoxification. Fasting inhibits the immune system. Fasting increases your risk of cancer. Those sections we're all going to go over. And then the next, we're going to ask the question and answer it. Does fasting increase lifespan? Some of the research that's out there beginning in the 1930s all the way up until today suggests that fasting can increase lifespan. So we're going to look at that in particular and all the data that's out there. Section 9 out of 10, the benefits of fasting. There is actually one benefit. And number 10, how to minimize the damage of fasting. Number 1, physiology of fasting slash starvation. At any given time, your blood contains a certain amount of sugar, and a certain amount of sugar is stored in your muscles and liver in a form called glycogen. During a fast, your body will first use the sugar available in your bloodstream, and once that has been exhausted, it will use your glycogen stores until they too are exhausted. This complete absence of sugar is called hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia is an absolute emergency. If sugar is not obtained quickly, you will die. If that doesn't make the case that sugar is essential, I don't know what does. Anyway, eating a piece of fruit during hypoglycemia will help provide essential sugars. But during a fast, the body has to get its energy elsewhere. So the question is, where does the energy come from during a fast? And the answer is this. Instead of using energy obtained from food, during a fast, the body has no choice but to begin eating itself for energy. The body will begin breaking down your muscles, brain, organs, and other soft tissues into amino acids, which will be used to manufacture sugar. The body will also begin breaking down fat stores and releasing free fatty acids into the bloodstream for energy. The primary hormones responsible for the breakdown of soft tissues into amino acids and of fat stores into free fatty acids are the stress hormones cortisol and adrenaline, respectively. Interestingly, another way to think of fasting, because your body is consuming itself, both your fat and muscle, fasting is the same as eating an all-meat diet. Except it's your own meat. Now, just to reiterate that process, it's a very important thing to remember, so I created another slide here for that just to illustrate it in a different way. So low energy or hypoglycemia leads to stress hormones being elevated, which leads to muscle and fat and organs consumed. Now I have a very important quote from Ray Pete that really helps put things into perspective. I think you will like this. And here we go. Since your body would eat itself to death in a couple of weeks, the body slows down its metabolic rate so we can get by on less calories. Brain function, reproductive function, digestive function, and the function of everything is slowed to prevent death. Now, the mainstream perspective of fasting. This comes from the National Institute on Aging, and I quote, Some study results suggest that calorie restriction may have health benefits for humans, but more research is needed before we understand its long-term effects. Human studies have also found many other physiologic effects 
whose long-term benefits and risks are uncertain. As well as, and these are the two key points here, reductions in sexual interest and the ability to maintain body temperature in cold environments. Now, do those sound like features of a healthy, robust person? Not to me. The classic example is of Paleolithic man running from a tiger in that fight or flight state. You are basically battling for your survival. And so systems and functions of the body that are not essential are switched off to free up resources to help allow you the greatest chance for survival. And so things like sexual reproduction and hair growth are one of the first things to go during stress. And so the reductions in sexual interests that have been found in human studies looking at fasting suggest high levels of stress. Now the other feature is the ability to maintain body temperature in cold environments is reduced after fasting. That is not a beneficial thing either. It's important to note that the most important factor for the maintenance of body temperature and heat production of the body is thyroid hormone. So loss of the ability to maintain body temperature suggests the thyroid is not functioning during a fast. And that is what we're going to talk about next. Fasting inhibits thyroid hormone. The active thyroid hormone T3 is essential for health. It is responsible for heat production and determines your metabolic rate. The thyroid gland itself produces a small amount of T3, but mostly T4, which is then converted into T3 by the liver. The enzyme within liver cells responsible for converting T4 to T3 is regulated by the amount of glucose in those liver cells. During fasting, at first the glycogen stores within the liver cells will allow for T3 production, but once that glycogen is depleted, T3 production will cease. During stress, the free fatty acids released into the bloodstream will inhibit the use of glucose via the Randall cycle, so T4 will not be converted into T3. Next detrimental effect of fasting is that it increases toxins in the body. The fats released during fasting will be mostly polyunsaturated fatty acids, also known as PUFA, which is an acronym. PUFA break down into toxic metabolites in the body, one of which is called prostaglandins and is critical for the formation of cancer. Now on the screen I have a diagram. If you're watching, you can see it. But if you are listening to the podcast, you cannot see it. You might want to check this one out later. I'll give you a link to the show notes at the end of the show, so stick around for that. But basically we're looking at arachidonate, which is also arachidonic acid, which is omega-6. So this is your so-called essential fatty acid, omega-6. And it shows the two pathways of the metabolites that it can break down into. One is a class called leukotrienes, and the other is prostaglandins, both of which are highly toxic. And these fragments tend to promote stress even more, which causes this vicious cycle where the body can't get out of stress. And that's when aging and degeneration begin. An interesting thing to note is that the older you are, the more PUFA will be in your tissues and the more dangerous fasting and stress overall becomes. Number five, fasting inhibits detoxification. Not only does fasting increase toxins in the body, but it reduces the liver's ability to detoxify those chemicals after they are produced. The fats released during fasting will be mostly all polyunsaturated fatty acids, which break down into toxic metabolites, as we've just gone over, and cause damage to cytochrome P450 detoxification enzymes. One study looking at the effects of various fatty acids found that most of the unsaturated fatty acids showed marked inhibition of detoxification enzymatic activities. Long story short, fasting reduces the liver's ability to detoxify chemicals. Number six, fasting inhibits the immune system. During a fast, the immune system is inhibited in a number of ways. Here are three of them. The first tissue to be consumed during stress is the thymus gland, which is essential for immune system function. We know this based on autopsy studies of elderly people which have found their thymus glands were completely atrophied and gone. The po Number two, the polyunsaturated fatty acids released during stress are potently immunosuppressive. In fact, for decades, they've been administered as drugs to kidney transplant patients specifically to disable their immune systems and prevent their bodies from rejecting the foreign tissue. It turns out that PUFA, or polyunsaturated fatty acids, directly kill white blood cells, which are the most important part of the immune system. Number seven, fasting increases your risk of cancer. Fasting increases the risk of developing cancer in a number of ways. Here are a few of them. During stress, lactic acid production is increased, which directly promotes cancer growth and metastasis. Number two, 
Muscle tissue, which is broken down during stress, contains a high concentration of the amino acid tryptophan, which is a precursor to serotonin. Serotonin is increased during stress and has been shown in numerous studies to directly promote tumor growth. And number three, Dr. Otto Warburg found in the 1930s that cancer was a disease of impaired oxygen use by cells, and thyroid hormone is essential for cellular oxygen use. The polyunsaturated fatty acids released during stress, fasting, and starvation inhibit thyroid function in at least six ways. Number eight, does fasting increase lifespan? This is going to be one of the most fascinating slides, I think, for a lot of people. It's jam-packed with research, and it has a plot twist that nobody could have expected. Beginning in 1935, studies have reported that caloric restriction can extend lifespan in various animals. Looking closer, scientists have found reduced production of reactive oxygen species and oxidative stress to be the mechanisms behind this life extension. Then, just when they thought they had it all figured out, in 1993 it was discovered that by subjecting rats to a diet restricting the amino acid methionine, lifespans were extended similarly to ones subjected to caloric restriction. In other words, it's not the absence of food that causes increased longevity, but the absence of certain foods, in this case methionine. The reduction in methionine consumption is responsible for the reduction in oxidative stress seen in fasting. So no, fasting does not increase lifespan. It increases stress, which is the precursor to all disease, degeneration, and aging. Number nine, there is one benefit of fasting that I know of, and that is by not eating during a fast, your intestines are given a break from dealing with toxins and undigestible materials in food. Endotoxin is a byproduct of the bacterial fermentation of undigestible foods within the gastrointestinal tract. The lack of food consumed during a fast means gut bacteria are deprived of food and the gut is sterilized. This means that fibrous food materials won't be metabolized by bacteria into the chemical endotoxin, also known as lipopolysaccharide. Thus, the body is relieved of having to deal with its constant toxic burden. Of course, this same benefit can be had without fasting, simply by not eating undigestible foods like beans, grains, nuts, and raw vegetables. Section 10. For those who realize that fasting is damaging to the body but still wish to do it for religious or other reasons, it's important to note the ways in which the damage can be minimized. According to Dr. Raymond Pete, during stress or fasting, the loss of tissue protein can be minimized by supplementing the minerals potassium, sodium, magnesium, and calcium. A good way to get these minerals is to do a juice fast, including fruit and vegetable juices. Since the purpose of the breakdown of your body's tissue proteins during stress is to create glucose, one of the quickest ways to shut off and switch off this stress response is to consume glucose. And eating carbohydrates like fruit can protect you during fasting in another way. Dr. Raymond Pete writes, Eating carbohydrates, especially fruits, can allow the liver to resume its production of T3. In summary, Depriving the human body of food activates stress, which results in a cascade of detrimental physiological effects that lead directly to disease and degeneration. Fasting inhibits thyroid hormone, it increases toxins while inhibiting detoxification, it inhibits the immune system, and it increases the risk of cancer. So long story short, in one sentence from this whole presentation, which should be common sense but isn't, don't starve yourself, eat. If you want to learn more about human physiology, there is a textbook that Dr. Raymond Pete recommends, and it's called Endocrine Physiology by Constance R. Martin. For your convenience, I have created a special link that will take you directly to that book on Amazon. I think it's only like $29. Incredible price. The link that will take you there is endalldisease.com slash textbook. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed this presentation, please share it with someone that you love. I hope they benefit from it. And if you want to check out any of the studies, and read them for yourself, which I always recommend you do. And you want to see the show notes so you can see this presentation in article format, the PowerPoint itself, the podcast, and the video all on one page. And to sign up for our mailing list, go to endalldisease.com slash episode 17. Once again, I'm Mark from endalldisease.com. I want to thank you for listening. I hope you have a great week. Now that this presentation is done, I'm going to dive right back into it and begin producing more content for you. So thank you again for watching, listening, or reading, and we will see you in the next presentation. Until then, stay healthy.